the first panel of the day, Forging a Viable Political Path, looked at the steps forward uh, for the actors and uh, moving Egypt toward a more stable, uh, secure, and a democratic uh, society. To this panel is going to take on another important issue in Egypt, which is the growing uh, polarization and division that has characterized the last several months, hence the title of the panel, Working Toward National uh, Reconciliation, uh, a very crucial goal for Egypt's future. Uh, we couldn't have a more diverse and interesting panel with us today to discuss this crucial issue. It's probably the more, most diverse uh, panel of Egyptians in Washington to meet in the last couple of months, uh, and they are being moderated by um, somebody who needs very little introduction. But let me briefly go through uh, the introductions uh, for you uh, in-depth bios or in your program book. But we're joined today by Mr. Wal Hadara. Uh, Mr. Wal Hadara served as an advisor to former President Morsi during his election campaign in 2012 and has uh, come down from Canada to join us uh, today. Uh, Dina Girgis uh, is the advocacy director for the Tahir Institute for Middle East Policy and writes extensively on Egyptian uh, politics. Next to her is Dr. Henny Serial Dean, uh, the head of the Commercial and Maritime Law Department at the Faculty of Law at Cairo University and also a member of the Destour Party and Nader Bakar, who is the uh, advisor to the chairman for media affairs of Egypt's El Nour Party and was one of the co-founders. Uh, they're being led in discussion by uh, Thomas Friedman, who needs little introduction uh, in this town. He's a three-time Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist of one of my favorite books, From uh, Beirut to Jerusalem. Uh, most importantly, he's been writing extensively about Egypt over the past couple of months. It's a topic he, he writes about with great passion and uh, compassion, uh, making him a really a, an ideal moderator for today's very unique panel. So I want to thank you all, panelists and moderator, for joining us today. It's a great honor and a privilege. And now I'd like to hand it over to you, Thomas. Hey, thank you very much. It's a treat uh, to be here. I've been really looking forward to this. And it is a great panel. Um, and some of the folks here I know, and some I, I, I met in, right out in the middle of Tahrir Square, the um, uh, first time I uh, met Nader during, during the revolution. I'm going to begin with a, a, a question. Um, which you know, I think is, is uh, obviously the central one right now, and that is that um, should we feel more optimistic or more pessimistic about Egypt's future uh, in the wake of what happened in the first week of July of this year? And I'm gonna begin by sharing my own bias. Um, and, and my own bias is that um, I am on balance, on balance, optimistic. Uh, and I will, will tell you why, and it goes back to an observation I made and wrote about um, during Tahrir Square, because after Tahrir Square, people, um, uh, when I came back home, having had the privilege to be there, and there are two people in this audience who were my escorts um, during those amazing days, um, uh, people asked me what I saw in Tahrir Square. And um, I told them, um, <clears throat> actually what I saw was a tiger <coughs> that had been living for 50 years in a five by eight cage get released. And there's three things I'm gonna tell you about tiger. One, tiger is not going back in the cage. Two, do not try to ride tiger. Tiger rides only for Egypt. If you try to ride him for the army or for the Muslim Brotherhood, if you had to try to ride him for Hamas, or Israel, if you try to ride him for Iran or the European Union, this tiger will only ride for Egypt. And anyone who tries to ride tiger for their own narrow interests will get their head bitten off. And lastly, tiger only eats beef. <laughs> um, because this tiger has been fed every lie in the Arabic language for 50 years, um, every bit of dog food, cat food, and hamburger helper. And um, uh, God save you if you try to feed this tiger anything other than beef. So um, uh, I have not been really disappointed by that theory. And 
it gets to my second reason for optimism. And my second reason for optimism is that I have a motto about the Middle East in general. And that is that the Middle East only puts a smile on your face when it starts with them, not with us, not with outsiders. When there's something deeply rooted that starts with them. I say Camp David started between Egyptians and Israelis. <coughs> Oslo started between Israelis and Palestinians. It's not called Oslo for nothing. It's not called Virginia. Uh, the tribal uprising in Anbar started there. And I would argue that something very deep and authentic uh, started in Egypt. And when that happens, we can amplify it, we can help. Um, but it's very important. This, something has started with Egyptians. And I think um, that, for me, is a huge source of optimism, however it gets interpreted. My last, though, I said I'm a, on balance an optimist. And the reason I'm cautious, the optimistic, has to do with a project I've actually been involved with for the last four months. I've been doing a documentary on um, climate and environmental stresses and the Arab awakening. And we've been to Yemen and to Syria and Egypt, looking at some of the population, water, environmental, and climate stresses that really help contribute to the pressures which produce this Arab awakening. It's been a fascinating experience because I've actually gone through the whole Arab world um, on a trip in which I never spoke to a politician. I only spoke to Arab environmentalists. And they're an amazing community, I must say. And when you look at the whole Arab world through the lens of environment, you get a very, very different picture. And the picture you get reminds me of something Princess Di said, the late Princess Di, when she was involved in her uh, very um, uh, difficult marriage with Prince Charles. She said one day, you know, there are three people in this marriage. And my message, and the reason I am a little tempered in my optimism, is I think Egyptians and Arabs need to understand there are now three people in this marriage. It isn't just the military and the Muslim Brotherhood. It's also Mother Nature. Mother Nature in the form of huge population explosion, salt water intrusion, uh, rising desertification, rising average temperatures. And the thing about Mother Nature is that she's just chemistry, biology, and physics. She's not like the United States or Europe. You can't talk her up. You can't talk her down. You can't say, Mother Nature, we're having a revolution. Um, could you take a few years off? She's going to do whatever chemistry, biology, and physics dictate. And she always bats last, Mother Nature. Do not mess with Mother Nature. And she is going to be in this story. And there's a very famous climate scientist, Dana Meadows, who is someone I've always admired, late climate scientist, who always used to say, when asked if we have enough time to deal with climate change, she'd always say, we have exactly enough time starting now. And that's how I feel about the whole Arab awakening. We have exactly enough time starting now. There is no time to waste going sideways or backwards because there are now three people in this story. So with that um, introduction of my, my own bias, I'm just going to go right down the panel here. While I'm going to start with you. Are, on balance, the events of the end of June and early July a reason for optimism or pessimism about Egypt's future? Well, I think that the, um, you know, clearly from my perspective, the events of June 30th and July 3rd <coughs> were a disaster. But, um, and, and, and please explain why. Well, uh, you know, I, 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 I'd have to side with Park Masood from the previous panel. Okay. There was a very clear way to move forward for Egypt. Um, if we accept that there was extreme public dissatisfaction with the Brotherhood and with the presidency of Mohamed Morsi, the Constitution of 2012 gave the Prime Minister vast, vast control and in fact was supported by the Supreme Court in this. The Supreme Court overturned the election writs that uh, President Morsi issued in February uh, on the grounds that it was not actually initiated by the Prime Minister. So, and the Constitution stipulates that the President exercises his authority through the Prime Minister. Prime Minister is selected by Parliament. Parliament's directions were in the works. If there was such deep public dissatisfaction with the President and his party, or his former party, then it would have been fairly straightforward to maintain the integrity of the democratic transition of Egypt, maintain hope for the country by organizing around those elections. And we didn't see that. What we saw instead 
was an upending of the democratic transition in favor of military intervention. And um, you know, as much as the military is maybe trying to have a civilian face to this, the reality is it is the military that's in control. And now there is no clear path forward uh, in terms of how we go. So in, in that mm -hmm. sense, uh, to me, it was a disaster. Um, the spilling of blood, the arbitrary measures, the detentions, the arrests, uh, people being held at unknown locations, um, even the notion of talking about legal access is a bit of a joke. Um, so so I, an unqualified disaster in my mind. Um, whether that's cause for optimism or pessimism is a different question. Mm -hmm. Like you, I, yeah, I'm an optimist, and I'm an optimist for two reasons. One is by dint of a religious worldview that says you must never lose hope in the infinite mercy of God. And one is by dint of an Egyptian worldview that I recognize in myself I had lost prior to January 25th. Um, like many Egyptians, I think we've given up on the notion of Egypt rising. And January 25th came to say, much like you've described, that the true measure of a nation is not by the days, weeks, and months, or even decades in which it is constrained and, um, and uh, you know, made into a, 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 put into a five by eight cage, but it is by decades, centuries, millennia, that over and over and over show what its true character is. And I think Egyptians have done that over millennia, and they will do that again. Great, thank you. Dina, same question. Um, since I'm a lawyer, I'm gonna give you a very lawyerly answer and say it depends. Uh -huh. um, I think <laughs> it's, it's still too early to tell. Um, I think um, I personally did support uh, what happened on, on June 30th, I think it was sufficiently clear that um, a broad, broad mass of Egyptians, even those um, who had supported um, President Morsi during the presidential election, it was clear that um, I would say an overwhelming majority of Egyptians were um, so dissatisfied with his presidency and with his uh, regime's performance that um, they needed substantive change. It was also clear that President Morsi um, and his regime were not very responsive to the people's demands. Um, if you look sort of at the evolution of the speeches, of the Morsi speeches, um, after June 30th really became this sort of serious phenomenon, we see an escalation from Morsi really and a confrontation and a challenging tone um, where, you know, in his final speech he said, I will defend my legitimacy. He must have used the word legitimacy, I think the count was something like 59 times, mm. and he said, I will defend my own legitimacy with my own blood if I have to. So clearly there was escalation. It didn't seem like there was a political solution at the time. Um, there was a great um, challenge, confrontation between the judiciary and the executive in that the executive had taken several steps to undermine the judiciary. And so impeachment methods via the judiciary w would have been very difficult to come by at that time. Um, so I, I see it as a positive step. Um, you know, I have never been a fan of, a mil of the military. Anybody that's you know, read what I write knows that much. Um, with that said, a timetable and a roadmap has been set. Like it or not, they are actually proceeding according to the timetable and the timeline. Um, you know, the uh, crackdown on the Brotherhood is, is clearly problematic for a number of reasons, namely that Egypt's history tells us that you know, the repression of Islamists actually does not work, that there has to be some form of accommodation here, and I think that's what the panel will, will discuss at greater length. Um, but, um, you know, I think it, it, really, it really depends on, you know, the military's understanding that transition to civilian rule is an imperative. Um, it's an imperative within a specific time frame as well. Um, and it also depends on the military understanding that the security crackdown uh, is, not, is not a substantive solution. It also depends on the Brotherhood and Islamist movements overall um, relinquishing, frankly, the duplicity um, the duplicity and the distinction between their words, um, which appear to be very pro-democratic, um, pro-equality, and really actions that have systematically undermined that rhetoric. So I'll leave yeah, it at that. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I'm actually to, to look forward 
uh, about the future, not to discuss much the past. I would, um, I would say uh, very clearly, I'm very optimistic about the future. Um, provided two things to happen. First is to have committed parties. I mean by parties, all parties involved, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about political parties, to diffuse the tension on the short term. And secondly, to commit to genuine democracy process. If we have this commitment and belief of all parties involved, definitely we will move forward. We have some signs of that. Um, for example, it, despite all the uh, unrest happening and the confrontation between Muslims Brotherhood and uh, I would say majority of Egyptians who have not been very satisfied with the uh, last year policies and were worried about their future and about Egypt civilization as such and putting Egypt first. Um, I think despite that there has been no, um, uh, no refusal to include Islamists mm -hmm. and modern Muslims or moderate Muslims mm -hmm. in general and mm -hmm. I think this is a step forward. Mm -hmm. But to get the Muslims Brotherhood involved in the process, this I think depends on them and on their leader, whether they want to be part again of despite all the disappointment to be part of the process, and I think um, the new generation of Muslims Brotherhood might push for that to happen. And secondly, we should stick with our uh, uh, definitely genuinely democratic process. It's not only about uh, election, part of it, how to involve other parties, how to focus on the common interest of Egyptians rather than differences, and I think this is the main mistake we have done during the transition period. We focused on our differences. And all failing, failing nations in the transition period done that. And most of the nations who managed to move forward in the transitional period who focused on their common interests and common grounds rather than differences. So it is very important not to repeat the same mistake. And I. I have Nader in next to me, and I, I have wor some worried when we s when we, when I started to hear. And this is not an attack at all, but this is a genuine, re <laughs> genuine. We welcome it. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. When I started, when they were talking about the uh, the fifty uh, <laughs> committee, which is the uh, constitutional committee, one of the comments came: We will be here in this committee to protect the. Islamic uh, interest and the what we have achieved. This, I think, is wrong. Uh, maybe you, you, you address your own people, but this is, I think, wrong because, again, it divides <laughs> the nation. And, and what I'm saying here, I'm saying also to the liberals and the others, don't try to get everything by knockout. This mm -hmm. doesn't work. We have to be all involved in the process but there's a condition to that. You have to believe in the democratic process and that this will include different uh, old people in the process. So I'm optimistic and I think there are growing uh, understanding of the need to move uh, forward. Great. Well, you know, Nader and I met uh, right yeah. in the week of Tahrir Square. We, I, I can still see myself in in your office, we had a couple of beers together. Well, yes. was, it was a <laughs> <laughs> just a joke, don't tweet that, okay? <laughs> uh, the Egyptian uh, media's gonna have a field day. <laughs> just a joke. Uh, Nader, how do you react to all of this? Okay, first of all, I would like to, to thank the Middle Eastern Institute for this invitation, for the, giving me the chance, giving us the chance to, to meet here and to uh, talk about this uh, critical issue, not only for Egypt, because I want to, uh, our colleagues from the media, from the Egyptian media here, to understand that it is not a, 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 a critical issue only for Egyptians, but I am quite sure that the Egyptian uh, um, uh, issue will affect, whether, whether negatively or, or positively, not only the Middle East, but the uh, whole world. So I want uh, my colleagues from the Egyptian media to understand that, why we are meeting here 
to, to talk about the reconciliation. Uh, um, um, it doesn't matter w w where we, we are talking, but uh, the, the, the only uh, thing uh, that we should insist on here is to reach a common ground between all and different uh, currents. Actually, I want to uh, give you uh, uh, my experience here, if I can say that. As one who, uh, I want to be practical as more as I can in this, uh, uh, in this panel. We tried, as a Noor party, we tried six months ago, uh, and I think Dr. Hani and Dr. Wael as well can remember that. I mean, because they were in Egypt. Uh, um, we tried six months ago to end the polarization in Egypt, making uh, an initiative at that time. It was an initiative not only for Dr. Mohammed Morsi. I am belonging to the Islamic stream, by, by, by the way. Uh, uh, um, but for Dr. Mohammed Morsi, liberals, uh, left, and for f uh, judiciary, for all. This initiative was precisely talking about formulating a coalition government uh, under uh, Dr. Mohammed Morsi regime, uh, ending the, the, the problem with the prosecutor general, substituting him, and ending the incitement against the judiciary, against, and even against the deep state. And let me tell you something here. Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, major and strategic mistakes that uh, people are uh, concentrating here um, is just to take the, the, the end picture of the June 30 and what is after the June 30 and forgetting the whole, not only the, 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 the past year, but the whole two years before. One of the Dr. Mohammed Morsi and his regime, uh, fatal mistakes was to uh, uh, show for everybody that the, um, that the battle is against the deep state. While in our point of view, the, the right cho uh, choice at that time is to contain this deep state, is to include them, is to call, actually to call for um, a true kind of reconciliation with the previous regime, I mean the Mubarak regime. Sure. In Noor party, uh, 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 still stuck to uh, its principle regarding the segregation uh, 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 of Muslim Brotherhood because we, at that time, we said clearly that we are against the segregation of the National Democratic Party. We warned not only Muslim Brotherhood but others that generalizing punishment against others will not benefit you. And this weapon will be, uh, will be used against you uh, one day. So now, we are repeating the same thing with Muslim Brotherhood. We, we are telling our people, we are telling politicians, telling the, the military and telling the Egyptian society itself that uh, segregating Muslim Brotherhood will not be the solution. Uh, um, the, 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 um, the statement of, uh, of uh, to be with us or against us, uh, uh, the, the equation, and I will elaborate more on this equation, the equation of uh, uh, either security or freedom the, 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 the zero-sum game uh, will not benefit this country. So uh, <coughs> if I have the, the chance, I will uh, tell you sure. more about this experiment, mm -hmm. the last one, and the, uh, our efforts regarding the reconciliation on ground with Muslim Brotherhood and the mediation between the Muslim Brotherhood and the military before Rabah uh, and the Nahda sit-ins evac evacuation and after them, actually. So now let's pick up with, with your point, and because and well, and, and everyone's touched on this. You know, my own bias from having lived through the Lebanese Civil War um, and, and ultimately Taif, uh, the lesson I drew from that as applies to the Arab Awakening is that the Lebanese Civil War ended tragically. It took 14 years, but ended it on, on one principle. No victor, no vanquished. Everyone has to be included. It also ended on the principle that the minority has to be overrepresented to reassure them. So you know, Christians were only 35% of the population actually got 50% of the seats. And I do think there's a lot of wisdom in that model. Um, so my question, in light of everything, uh, the points you've all made, and they're all wonderful points, um, can there be a bridge built, uh, an inclusive bridge built, that will bring the Muslim Brotherhood back into the political process? Should we care about the Muslim Brotherhood, or should we care about Islamists, as a, as a specific to, to one party? But how do we get um, back to a, a broader reconciliation process. Because one thing I really do believe that the lift Egypt has to make is huge. It's, it's a big lift, and it requires everyone. Um, it requires the biggest cross-section of the population, men and women, 
that one can imagine. So, well, how, how can we so, get back? You know, I, I'll start by saying that I'm a firm believer in Santayana's notion that all progress is rooted in the past. And um, the difficulty with Egypt is that, you know, we say in this part of the world that everybody's entitled to their own opinion. In Egypt, everybody thinks that they're entitled to their own facts. And so the narrative of what happened over the last couple of years, and particularly over the presidency of, uh, of President Morsi, is in fact in dispute. You know, so Nadu will say, you know, the, the president took on the deep state, took on the Mubarak regime, whereas many, you know, so-called liberal activists will say the president did not do enough. In fact, he embraced the regime. And invariably, the story of the last year is that we're caught in the middle. Uh, on the one side, people say, you're not doing enough. And on the other side, people are saying, you're doing too much. Um, and so unless we can sort out what actually happened and an assessment of was the problem that we didn't do enough or was the problem that we did too much, um, the suggestions that get built on that um, are going to have to you know, be subject for, for a lot of criticism. But let me press you but to be a little more specific. Sure. Though, given the dilemma we have, and that is that politics doesn't always give us that opportunity to sort out the past. In, in, and so, but let's at least sort yeah, out the present. Exactly. You know, which is we get you know, the notion. So the notion that you know we need a process of national reconciliation. How do you have a process of national reconciliation where the heads of four major political parties are either in detention or self-imposed exile? You know, one of them is accused of major, you know, high treason, et cetera, et cetera. So Dr. Braga is under, you know, a cloud of charges. He's now overseas. I believe Dr. Ayman Noor is overseas as well. But there's you know rumblings of stuff going on against him. Uh, Hazm Salah Husmaid from Hezbo Raya, uh, Mohammed Morsi, Fadel Katatni, you know, and, and they're not just Islamist parties. I mean, you know, the former head of Dastur is in that, you know, in that boat. Ghadi uh, Thawra, which is a distinctively, you know, secularist party. So if we are serious about talking about a process of natural reconciliation, we have to acknowledge that the platform in which we're standing right now mm -hmm. does not allow for that. Even the beginning. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. And, and Bill Burns and yeah. Bernardino Leon yeah. were in Egypt uh, a few weeks ago trying to convince people that a series of confidence building measures, starting with the release of at least a few people, somebody that you can negotiate with, right. somebody that can sit at the table, is imperative to beginning this process. So let me stop you there. You know, what's your reaction to Wells Point? Well, um, I mean, we're living really a cycle. It's, it's been sort of the repeated cycle of the Muslim Brotherhood and its relationship with the state that it does represent a segment of the Egyptian population. Um, we do have polarization. Um, I, I agree with the previous panel um, with Karim Hageg in saying that the camps are, are not equal um, and that um, the Muslim Brotherhood has in fact lost popularity over the past year and may continue to do so if they continue to embrace sort of street violence and, and tactics. Um, and uh, so, you know, they're there, they exist for whatever reason, they are repressed. And then they go into forms of resistance, whether that be underground violence, whether that be, uh, you know, uh, reaching out via, you know, grassroots methods to the public until they sort of reach a certain mass where they are able to enter into an accommodation with the strongest player on the ground. That tends to be the state. They did so. Um, with SCAF, as we can remember. Um, they did so, and there seemed to be an implicit understanding, I think, that in exchange for staying out of national security matters, um, that the Islamist roadmap would pass um, without a problem. Mm -hmm. If we recall, um, the youth, the secular or non-Islamist youth that had taken to the street to protest SCAF's measures, undemocratic measures that they saw, um, were criticized by the Brotherhood leadership at the time who called on, on their followers and said, we will not be part of these protests. We think the SCAF is doing a fantastic job. So let's not forget that. Um, now, why that relationship broke down is something that we can examine. It's clear that the Brotherhood started to engage in divisive rhetoric. Um, it's clear that the Brotherhood um, uh, started to initiate sectarian strife. Um, the Brotherhood also did something very critical for the Egyptian army, um, a Morsi aid went out, um, I believe it was in June, and said that um, you know, they encourage or that they accept Egyptians to go wage jihad in Syria. Now, you know, this is a huge problem for the Egyptian military. So there are a, a constellation of reasons there. So really, we're back in this cycle. And we are back in, in that, the, the, the moment of repression, which is going to lead and is already leading to resistance. Um, now, 
what we need is essentially break yeah. to break that break cycle, yeah. to break that cycle. But my question, I guess, back to Mr. Um, Hadara and, and also um, um, to uh, the Nord Party representative here is how do we, or, or, or to go back to your example, Tom, if they represent 20 or 25% of the Egyptian population today and we agree to give them 45% or 50%, I personally, as somebody who believes in human rights and I didn't mean to suggest actually that analogy, but, right. but I would just. If, if we were, as well. here, yeah. <laughs> here are the questions that I am posing, I guess, for, yeah. for those that would um, adopt the Islamist position. How is it that I am able to trust um, a party whose president, President Morsi, sat in on a rally excoriating Shiites um, in, in the most humiliating, in, insidious way, which led to their lynching, um, in the most heinous way, four days later, without a statement, a single condemnation from the president at that time. But that's not true, you know. Okay, I mean, well, I, I'd like an answer to that. Well, um, let's, let's, get, let's get an answer. Right. I mean, what, what's your reaction? No, that's not, I mean, so uh, d d definitely there was a statement, there's a number of statements, and one of the challenges we had over the past year has been and we really, you know, the answer to the philosophical question of when a tree falls in the forest and there's no one around to, you know, to, uh, to see it, did it make a sound? We, you know, we issued statements. They're on the Facebook page, which is still up. Uh, you have them at a press conference, and there is very little echo. Uh, the issue of the after, presidential aid. After, after the, the conference? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But why didn't President Morsi the say issue, Shiites for example, are, are, are Egyptians and they should not be called infidels and they should not be called and guess and review filthy? Review the statement. Review I mean, the statement. What but does let me, let me, let me right, interrupt right, right. so we don't get caught on that. But this is, no, it's important about just the, the, sure. the passion no, that no, I mean, both people yeah, bring yeah. to this. We don't want to get into a sort exactly. of a one. So let, yeah. me, let me go to, to Hanny to be the peacemaker here or to Nader, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, and, uh, they've, uh, they've tried the their hand at that. <laughs> But I want to I want to <laughs> take that we, we see here the passions that are at work and they're legitimate and I understand them. So, but I, I want to go back to you and, and Nader. How do we bridge that? How do we get? Um, how do we not let the past bury the future? How do we get? Should we be concerned about this vacuum of a very important political party in the process going forward? And what do you what would you demand of them to be part of this process? Both of you. And what do you think they're entitled to? Um, Tom, I, th I think the reconciliation process is not uh, a decision to make and enforce it mm -hmm. overnight. Uh, it needs uh, a lot of patience and a lot of work to break the mistrust yes. in the place. And you can't do this overnight. So I think, practically speaking, one of the things, um, and it doesn't matter who make the first step, mm -hmm. whether the Muslim Brotherhood or the uh, military or the government or mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, uh, whoever in, in charge. But I think the first step has been taken in a sense that a commitment to democracy process mm -hmm. and to start the constitution <coughs> again process and to establish uh, sort of main principles that accommodate everybody. And I think this is, will be a way for. But, but let me just be specific here. Sure. So, but but in, in, you know, in terms of Wiles' point, you know, what, you know, should they be, should the Muslim Brotherhood be included in this? And in terms of Dina's point, what should we demand of them as a, to be a part of the process. Uh, but I mean and Bar exactly, and but, uh, but let, let's be specific I, I, here. I, I, this is again, it's up to them, because it's very clear. You have to first recognize that you made mistakes, uh -huh. and you have to be committed to the democratic process mm -hmm. again, and you have to right, denounce. Because I would say, how do I do that from jail? I will look, okay. you have to denounce, definitely, you have to denounce uh, violence mm -hmm. on your uh, on people. You have to also... But that, but that was done, right? Sorry? And there's multiple uh, statements. I did, not, I did not interrupt you, so please, I'm sorry, well, I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I, only I can interrupt. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, you're the boss. <laughs> so, it, 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 it's again, um, if you continue to think, and, and, and one of the main, I didn't want actually to talk about the past, but since we have to talk about past, to explain myself here, it's,
one of the major mistakes, and this is, again, has to be very clear. One of the main mistakes I believe that the Muslims Brotherhood committed, they came with ideas from the past to rule the present, and they decided, which is Khilafah, which idea, and their main objective for the past year is to control Egypt at all levels and to exclude everybody else who is not within their system or has some sympathy to them. This was clear, and this is why in one year they managed to be opponents to military, police, ordinary people, liberals, uh, judicial system, everybody, because they, everybody else who did not belong to them was excluded from yeah, the let process. Let me, let, me, let me interrupt in just one second, okay, because what I hear from you and, and Dina Hani is that we want you to acknowledge, okay, where you went wrong. Absolutely. Okay, but why else says, I, how, how do I do that from a jail cell? Who's even gonna hear me if I do? How do I do that if I can't actually organize my people to have that kind of um, uh, statement or declaration or, or rethink? I wanna bring Nader in. So w w help us out here. You, you, you uh, can be the mediator here. Um, uh, you're still part of the political process, but you certainly understand the currents and rhythms of the Islamist community. Is there a way back for the Muslim Brothers? Should there be? be should we be concerned about this? What What is your thought on that? Hey. Uh, first of all, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Why a new party? Why a new party uh, uh, has joined the roadmap by Please. the uh, third of July? Yeah. Actually, I'm belonging again. I'm belonging to the the same Islamic stream that Dr. Wael Haddad belongs yes, to. Yes. Realizing facts uh, doesn't mean that we accept it. Mm -hmm or we accept them. We realized before the 30th of June that uh, uh, things will come to an end. Um, we tried a lot to limit the losses, if I can say that, to limit uh, the losses of the whole Islamic stream to its minimum level. We tried a lot. The losses of the Islamic The losses of the, uh, yeah. of the Islamic stream mm -hmm. to its minimum level. Even uh, after the, uh, uh, the 30th of June, uh, take place, the, the, the event of uh, 30 June, we tried to reach again Dr. Muhammad Morsi to save whatever he can save. I'm telling you because, uh, I'm telling you that because I have the same feeling of, uh, of uh, Dr. Haddara and s same worries about the, the future of the mm -hmm. Islamic stream, but in a reasonable, if I can say that, mm -hmm. in a reasonable uh, way. We actually joined the, the 3rd of July uh, roadmap in order to, to choose the least evil, in order to consider that the past year regarding not only Muslim Brotherhood, because of course we are belonging to the same, uh, to the same uh, situation. Yeah. So uh, w w when the Egyptian people are judging Muslim Brotherhood, uh, of course they are stereotyping the whole Islamic stream, even if we are trying to separate our situations from the Muslim Brotherhood. I'm not here criticizing you or attacking you. Um, we wanted at that time to, to uh, consider the, the past year uh, 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 as a failed experiment, mm -hmm. and that's all. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, quickly uh, re-engage in mm -hmm. the political process. Um, we, we were, and still, uh, trust very much in the popularity of the Islamic stream. So why not to consider the, 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 the past year as a failed uh, uh, experiment? and re-engage again in the political mm -hmm. process, uh, learning from the uh, mistakes. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Muslim Brotherhood before the, 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 the past year, they said a lot uh, uh, by uh, engineer Khairat Shatter. I hope everything will uh, for him, inshallah, uh, mm -hmm. in the coming future. H he said a lot of times that we understand, we completely understand the, the bad experiment of Algeria. Even he said uh, uh, the, the, the scenario of Gaza we don't want to, to repeat it again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, even the Turkish experiment itself, mm -hmm. they didn't learn from it. How to deal with the military, how to deal with the SCAF, how to understand that the deep state is there and will be there for a long of time uh, 
things need to, uh, to have a change management philosophy. Things need to be clear for the Egyptian right. people. So let me, let me just, yeah, what I hear coming from you is that um, we, the, the Islamists or the Muslim Brotherhood should acknowledge that this was a failed experiment for many reasons. Um, and, and the military should too, and everyone should sort of go forward, basically. Um, I, I want to get to the liberal parties as well, the, and, and, and the, the, the centrist parties, but I just want to, because I'm, I'm still hungry, I'm still hungry here for a way forward. I, I still don't feel I've got an answer to my question, should and must the Muslim Brotherhood be included in the political process as the Muslim Brotherhood? And if so, how specifically, what did they have to do? Um, and what do the, uh, the centrists have to accept for this to happen? Somebody give me an answer. Uh, can I, can I, sorry for that, can, I, can, I, can, can I complete? Uh, can I complete? Sure, I'm sorry. Go my ahead. thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sure, Muslim Brotherhood should be included in the coming future, or they will again come to the underground work. You are talking right. about millions of people. Excluding them from the, from the political life doesn't mean that you can uh, successfully exclude right. them from the social life. Right. They will be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, I cannot imagine that because some people dislike Muslim Brotherhood, they will disappear mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the society. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think now, after uh, Rabah and, and uh, Nahda sit-ins, evacuation. Now, Muslim Brotherhood, and I'm here repeating what uh, Dr. Khalil Anani uh, said before. Muslim Brotherhood should have a, 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 a complete revision, not only to, to, to thoughts, mm -hmm. but to the way mm -hmm. uh, they are dealing with others right. outside the, 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 the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, the, the, the way they are uh, uh, think how uh, Egypt and other countries, by the way, should be ruled uh, mm -hmm. uh, under uh, 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 their, um, their regime right. or a regime that is containing uh, themselves. So a complete right. revision, not only to thoughts, but to the hierarchy, to the way yes. of, uh, uh, of dealing okay. with others. Now let, let's stop there, because I want to go quickly, give everybody here just a real quick to the answer, and then I want to go to the li liberal, uh, and then I want to open to the floor. So well, so I come back to- I think this is a central sure, point. I, I come back to two basic things. Uh, the first is, with the depth of popular resentment against the, the Islamists or the Brotherhood specifically, why could we not have parliamentary elections that mm -hmm. were held up three times? But my answer is we, we, it, we, no, we no, didn't no. have that. We oh, got to go. Right. And so the we question start is, where we are now. what do people, how do people view the mechanisms for resolving our differences? Mm -hmm. no. And so if the idea is that we always need to impose things on people, framing the question of should the brotherhood mm -hmm. have a role or not is part of the problem. Uh -huh. You were asking, should Egyptians, really, I mean, mm -hmm. unless we now get into the discourse of they're not Egyptians, right. should Egyptians have a role in, their in the country's political right. future? The way we're asking the question, the way we're framing the conversation is antithetical to what national reconciliation right. and representative government can look like. So from your point of view, it's, 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 uh, there's only one answer to that question. They have to be released, allowed to organize politically, and, and uh, everybody else. Right. The okay. Nur, Baradari, you know, the people need to be able to feel they can go home. So very clear, clear. Dina. I agree completely that there needs to be a broad conversation among the Egyptian public. But first, or as part of that, integral to that, I need to understand who you are as the Muslim Brotherhood. I That's need to me, understand mm -hmm. why after July 3rd, mm -hmm. we had Asim Abdel Magid, Zumur, Safwat Hegezi specifically invited, you know, to the Rabah stage multiple times to say, we will martyr ourselves. Christians and communists are following Sisi. Uh, uh, you know, Il Biltegi even said, Muhammad Il Biltegi, who was considered a moderate leader of the Brotherhood, went out explicitly and said, if Morsi is restored to power, the attacks in Sinai will immediately stop. Therefore, when you question why the Egyptian public makes links of the Muslim Brotherhood to terrorist groups, you must understand where that is coming from. So for me, it's not enough to acknowledge the failures of the past. I want to know who you are now. And I want Egyptians to have a broad conversation as to whether we accept you with all your ideological point of view, baggage, whatever it may be, as part of our roadmap mo moving forward. And that, that includes the Constitution. And I would pose the same question to a Noor party. You advise the Brotherhood to undergo revisions. A Noor party was equally guilty of, of, of you know, excoriating Shiites. And you even had a campaign saying, Ma'an did the Shia, together against Shiites. Therefore, to me, that says you do not have 
the understanding of citizenship that I would like to see post-revolutionary Egypt adopt. And so I need to understand, are you going to undergo revisions as well? Nadir. Okay, when it comes to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah Pani and then Nadir. Um, <laughs> yeah, as a moderator, you, de you dream of having someone like Dina on your panel. Okay, so it's <laughs> Please. Um, I just before answering your question, uh, um, uh, Dr. Hadara mentioned several times to Dr. Brady. Yes. And to Ayman Nour. <laughs> yeah. I spoke with Dr. Brady after his resignation, and he was, uh, I mean, in a very good shape, and he said, he told me that he's going to spend the uh, rest of the summer with his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. There is no, any, he's not under arrest. He's, yes, he's under attack by mm -hmm. media and, and, and some of the opponents, but that's, yeah. he, he's not. Uh, uh, but again, I want to be specific, you know, how, how. No, no, but this is yeah. because this has I been mentioned yeah. as Ayman Nur the same. Right. Uh, he, he can come, he, he doesn't have any. Uh, problems or judicial uh, problems. The fate and future of the Back Muslim brother. future yeah. again, as yeah. I said, it's again, I think it's very difficult question how to start. And I think the main start is to stick with the roadmap, which constitution, election, and so forth. And nobody will be excluded. If you decide to enter to the election, there has been no ban on mm -hmm. the Muslims Brotherhood or any other uh, Islamist parties to get into the election. So it's part, this is one of the things. If you want to mm -hmm. and face the people and want to impose yourself, there has been no ban. And I categorically against any collective banning against mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. because this is again, uh, you can't do it uh, and this will definitely hinder okay. the uh, uh, moving uh, forward to uh, democracy. So what I'm saying is <coughs> simply, you can't take a decision uh, Muslims Brotherhood should be included or should be excluded, right. but you have to have a general plan to include everybody according to the map. You have a good constitution which include everybody. Then you have a presidential or parliamentary and presidential election. Okay. Everybody would be uh, 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 entitled to do this in a free election. Okay. This is a very important. And then it is up to the people to decide and uh, it's up to you to which route you want to uh, go in. So that's, okay. I think, is the we'll best way to yeah. move uh, forward. Okay. Now, you I was the question uh, was posed okay. to you. I, I was an elected member at the uh, uh, previous constitutional uh, committee. Mm -hmm. uh, an elected, not hired, an elected member, okay? And this is a, 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 a point that I want to stress here. Um, I still remember, and, and I don't know if uh, Dina shared me the same uh, same thing. I still remember how we struggled uh, uh, to uh, to find some kind of compromise between all uh, and different ideologies uh, inside the constitution constitutional committee. Uh, that ends by an agreement to have four new articles, or actually three new articles, at the uh, nowadays constitution. One of them, which is totally avoided in any uh, uh, discussion between uh, um, the, the, the most of Egyptian groups now, is the third article, which for the first time in all over Egypt history uh, talks about uh, uh, Copts and Jewish uh, 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 rights uh, uh, in Egypt, mm -hmm. um, independently from the second article. This kind of compromise uh, ended with this third article, along with the article uh, uh, 219. And by the way, for everybody need to know, this uh, paper was initially uh, generally uh, signed by uh, the church representatives, Al-Azhar representative, judiciary uh, representative, Muslim Brotherhood and uh, uh, Nur Party, mm -hmm. and as well as uh, the liberal uh, stream. Um, I, uh, I have yet to say that uh, only Dr. Wahid Abdel Mujib say that I am signing, but with some concern about uh, this agreement. So we tried. I, I'm not uh, saying that we are ideal, but we tried to uh, uh, find an end to the sectarian struggle or to the okay. sectarian problems. Secondly, uh, I here want to, 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 to make a remark that uh, uh, when the Middle Eastern Institute invited me, uh, uh, um, I noted that at, at the invitation uh, letter itself, 
they uh, described, I, I know it, is, uh, it was not intended, but they described uh, 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 my colleague uh, Lina with the Coptic lawyer. I said, why? I say why, why too. Why? I didn't see that. After that, yes, they, uh, they uh, have some amendments to, 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 the, to the letter, but uh, at that time, I, I, I made this, this notes. Why uh, uh, they said the Coptic, it is for me to know mm -hmm. that she is uh, Coptic before I come here, mm -hmm. so to, to, to make some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, decoration to, to, to my words, <laughs> to take care of my words. The Coptic That's lawyer. Uh, and this is, and this yeah. is uh, uh, actually what we should do with the Egyptian society itself. Egyptian society itself, after not only the 30th uh, of mm -hmm. June, but after the, 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 the two, uh, the previous right. two years, uh, should have uh, some kind of tree rehabilitation, if mm -hmm. I can say, to uh, uh, its way of thinking uh, about others, its way of dealing about others. Right. Uh, so now let me, let, me, let me stop you there, because I want to get to another thing in, in, in the audience, because I, I want to take the other side of this question, which for me is very important, which is one thing that, that hasn't manifested itself since Tahrir is a broad base authentic, legitimate, progressive, liberal party uh, in Egypt that stands for a multi-sectarian Egypt, an Egypt that will implement the Arab Human Development Report uh, to overcome the deficits of knowledge and women's empowerment um, and, um, uh, and freedom. Why is that? Not that there aren't those voices, we know Dr. Baradai, but wh why is there no broad base that could really take on the Muslim Brotherhood in an election and, and Noor um, in a way that uh, would, would, um, would really resonate? Nina. Um, well, I think that's a great question. Um, I, I, first of all, I want to start by sort of um, disavowing this concept that's been proliferating here in DC <laughs> policy circles mm -hmm. about the illiberal liberals. Mm -hmm. We don't know who the liberals are. We've tested the SCAF. They were certainly not liberal. Tested the Brotherhood. They were certainly not liberal. Um, but we haven't tested the liberals yet. Mm -hmm. Who these liberals are, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is this large swath of people. Say, you know, there's a titan sort of confrontation between the military and, and the brotherhood right. or Islamists overall. And then this third sort of amorphous mass, right. you can call them civic Egypt, you can yeah. call them non-Islamist Egypt. You know, th they go by many names. We're always struggling to identify who they are. They're not actually telling exactly. us. Exactly. They're <laughs> liberals yeah. and leftists. Yeah. Yeah. They have, um, frankly, uh, been very poor in extending their message, um, not just to the international community, but to Egyptians as well. Um, I think part of it goes, goes back to differing ideologies. Um, by definition, the Brotherhood is a disciplined or hierarchical organization. Mm -hmm. Um, democratic or liberal movements that are not bound to religious ideology are not. Therefore, dissension and disagreement and even disagreements with Baradai, people calling him you know, a traitor and to be tried. Um, there is an equal and opposite camp saying this is nonsense and Baradai is, is still you know, a valued member of our movement, whatever it may be. So it is incumbent upon us to try to figure this out ahead of of any future election because we are polarized. We do have a political vacuum. The, the current government is a transitional one. I, for one, do believe that the military seems to, El Sisi seems to have learned from SCAP's mistakes mm -hmm. in that they do actually want a departure from daily governance, from, from the nightmare that is governing Egypt on a daily basis. Um, and, and, you know, we, what happens next, we simply don't know. Who is a viable presidential candidate, we don't know. What worries me is that in, this cir in these circumstances of polarization and political vacuum, this is really where we see the potential for charisma, nationalism, populism to really emerge. And as has been mentioned before, Egypt is living a very nationalistic moment. And if we go back in Egyptian history, when Egypt lived that moment in the past, it did not fare well. Okay. Uh, honey, I want your answer to that, and then we're going to open it to the floor. Sure. Um, uh, it is a very important question because we, I have been, for, for example, and the school and other parties classified, I don't know whom by whom, mm -hmm. as liberal parties. Mm -hmm. And most of us have not defined themselves as liberal, but yeah. we have been defined by others as liberal because it's mainly the concept was a, a si sort of a civic parties, non-Islamist mm -hmm. parties, mm -hmm. this and again, there is a diversification between these parties among themselves and their 
were more focused about democracy, ab more focused about freedom, about social uh, fair, but this is again right. uh, has been said, and they have been treated as such while there is no real ideological uh, uh, definition in these parties to be classified as, as such, and this is part of the problem. But all civic parties, as I would like to, to, to classify them or describe them, whether the parties before the revolution, uh, January revolution, or the <coughs> new parties, they still struggle in building themselves, in reaching out the people, because they started from scratch, and there is a lot also among the people of mistrust these parties, because they haven't proved themselves before the revolution, right. and the new parties as well have not reached out the people because they were, uh, you know, uh, uh, not, they don't have a common grounds in every village, and this is in the building process. We should not also put all our criti criticism to these parties mm. because they are new parties, right. and they are still in the building process. You have a funding issues in most of these uh, parties. While part of the election, last election, and we have to face it, there has been a lot of money injected to Islam's parties, particularly main four, the uh, Freedom and Justice Party, the Noor Party, the Asala Party. You can ignore, I'm telling you an information, <laughs> established <laughs> information. Uh, uh, and this has been- What is the evidence? Th there is, I have the evidence. Okay, uh, I uh, have bring the it evidence. to the judiciary. <laughs> no, it is with the judiciary, okay. by the way. Then and the reason, let it for and the reason, no, uh, uh, Nader, there has been a judgment where some people have been jailed. The problem with the uh, foreign aid issues were not actually to submit uh, finances to the uh, these organizations, but rather to have cash to these parties. And this is who, established. Who is this? No, let me, let me stop anyway, you guys here because I want to I want to I want to I, yeah. I just want to finish my yeah. please. I want oh, to finish please, my please, go ahead. Go ahead. So these parties have. Uh, struggle with uh, financial organization right. and also uh, 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 a lot of other issues and structures. So they are in the building process, and therefore also you have uh, we have to acknowledge a problem which will be coming. Uh, I don't think any of these parties have a strong candidate to uh, to offer, right. and this <coughs> and as such you might have a candidate coming from the military background. This is like mm -hmm. this can happen, mm -hmm. and I think if this happen, it might affect the democracy process. I would love to see uh, a, a candidate coming from non-military, uh, mm -hmm. non-military uh, background, but this not might be the case okay. uh, in the near future. Well, uh, quickly, and then we're going to go to the floor. Otherwise, I got some angry. People. Important point: when I when uh, Kate reached out around this conference, I made very clear that. Um, I'm not a member of the Brotherhood, yeah. actually, and uh, so I can't really represent their position. And one of the, qu and yeah, so everybody's pointing at me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the point really is we have to ask ourselves, why isn't a representative of the Brotherhood here at this forum, or the SJP at least, uh, to be able to present that point of view? Which brings me back to my very basic point is because they're all in jail. Okay, let's hold that thought. Oh, the floor is they open. are not all in jail. Yeah, no, right. they are not all in jail. The uh, <laughs> young lady. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> this no, no, no. The existence of an exception yeah. proves the existence <laughs> of a rule. Right over here, this, uh, the young lady there. Yeah. Hello, Dua Taha. My question is, is for the, uh, Mr. Bakar. Um, I just wanted uh, to have your comments on, uh, on the, the child marriage. Um, um, article that was passed in the constitution where you were elected uh, as a member in it, please. Do you remember its number? <laughs> no, I don't remember it, because its Because it number. doesn't exist. N really? Yes. Okay, revise so it, if, you can, you, if you can inform us about it, of this course. would be great. And if it is true that it was, uh, uh, um, uh, it was passed, uh, I just wonder uh, how come uh, the rest of the world uh, did not comment or say anything about little girls as the, as the age of 13 in Egypt getting married. Yeah. I, I guess first that was directed all, at you, Nader, but... Um, uh, uh, first of all, um, uh, with all respect to you, and I'm not uh, joking when, uh, when I said it doesn't exist, but I, I really tell you the truth. Uh, this article doesn't exist. Uh, 
firstly. Secondly, uh, regarding uh, uh, the issue of children marriage, do you know, uh, ma'am, uh, uh, um, the U.S. Uh, uh, laws re uh, regarding, uh, uh, I can remember, but um, South Carolina, I think, mm -hmm. or uh, some, some states here, some states here, huh? Uh, Okay, you can search by yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, how many states? How many states here allow for uh, uh, under 18 uh, 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 marriage, but with the uh, parent uh, 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 agreement? Okay, uh, I'm not here uh, to struggle with you about about this issue exactly. Uh, I was just telling uh, at that time um, that a kind of uh, uh, reasonable debate should be there. A scientific debate should be there. Uh, about our Egyptian traditions and habits, about the, uh, uh, um, uh, the real world in Egypt, uh, I, I mean the upper Egypt and uh, 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 the upper Egypt and poor, poor uh, uh, areas uh, in Egypt. You, can, you have to understand how those people are thinking, how are these traditions, and then to keep, after that, after, after this considering, to, uh, to keep the, the right of, uh, of, um, uh, of, of women under, under 18, their full right. Uh, uh, if they don't want to, uh, to marry uh, uh, before uh, reaching the, the, uh, the age of, uh, of 18 or, uh, or not. So uh, again, I, I don't remember right now, but I will search by myself uh, about the states, the American states that allow for uh, marriage under, under 18. Thank Give you. me a while and I will. Adina, uh, you're uh, a yes. lawyer, and um, um, uh, I, I believe that under no circumstance can any state in the United States permit uh, marriage under 16. Years you old. you will get surprised. No, uh, 16. 16. 16 is is the the cutoff. Yeah. I believe what the the woman was was referencing here, and over 16 to 18, you need parental permission. I believe what the woman was referencing here was a proposal that was actually made. Um, by an Islamist to remove the mandatory age for marriage. And that was proposed. It did not make it into the final version, but it was there. She now mentioned the, the Constitution. Now, mm. now the so reason- Be now, precise to the Constitution. Now, the reason that there is so much concern about this, there should be plenty of concern of how women fare under any Islamist regime, is for instance, we had a very benign um, document put out by the United Nations simply to combat violence against women. The Brotherhood's response, and Nedir will tell you that they are more, quote, extreme than the Brotherhood, was to say that if Egypt ratifies this document, it would lead to, quote, the complete disintegration of society and that it contravenes Islam. Therefore, there is good reason to worry about the status of women. Some, uh, 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 the Brotherhood MP, uh, Azagarov was, you know, uh, trying to remove whatever harassment laws, anti-sexual harassment laws we had in place. Therefore, what kind of regard does, you know, this party, if this is their representative and what she, you know, this is what she's trying to do and what she's doing, what does it say about the status of women, about how these various Islamist forces regard women? Thank you. The presidency approved that statement to the United Nations and supported okay. it. Okay, let's go, I um, uh, just want to make sure we get, get somebody in the back. B uh, back there, with the blue shirt. Yeah, right there. Oh, uh, I'm independent. My question is just Bakar, but um, I was hoping we could actually talk about reconciliation on the ground. To what degree is your party coordinating with the Salafi Dawa to try and drive some sort of social solution to the great divisions that are happening currently in Egypt? And I was wondering if you can comment, I understand if you may not have word of it, about what happened recently in Marsa Matruh, which is being touted by the military as the first example of reconciliation. In short, the arguably the leader of the Salafi Dawa, Sheikh Ali Ghalab, accepted or facilitated with the military intelligence to let the families of the victims accept 50,000 pounds in trips to Mecca. So ha is this uh, some sort of strategy that they're hoping to implement elsewhere? Um, I was hoping you can comment on that. First of all, I, um, uh, I doubt about some uh, information that you, you have mentioned about, uh, about Marsa Matruh, but uh, I trust you, I trust you. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Um, the Salafi call is something different from uh, Muslim Brotherhood. 
I don't want my words to be like attacking Muslim Brotherhood or criticizing them, but <coughs> actually we are like a stream. We are not like a family. Uh, we don't have a, a strict uh, and firm uh, hierarchy by which we can impose everybody belongs to, uh, to this community or to this union, the, the, the Salafi call, to obey whatever uh, uh, decision uh, that we have uh, made. But by the way, um, uh, some people from Egypt uh, keep always saying that uh, you guys uh, uh, joined uh, genuinely the, uh, uh, the 3rd of July, while some of your members were at uh, Rabah and the Nahda sittings. We said yes, because uh, uh, we are like an institution that some members of it can uh, easily, uh, cannot easily understand uh, how the decision making or, or what, uh, what are the facts beyond our, uh, our decision, especially in this critical situation, this critical, uh, uh, critical issue. So some of our members yes, were at Rabah and, uh, and the Nahda. Uh, our leaders were not there. Uh, the most of our uh, members, uh, this is not to say that uh, Rabah and uh, Nada Sevens were wrong. No, I'm totally with their uh, right to express their, uh, their, uh, their point of view and to express their feelings against the, uh, the 30th, uh, 30th of, uh, okay. of June, but I in a peaceful way. Okay, good. Let's go uh, right up here. Mohammed Shinal, Voice of America. We heard Dr. Haddara complaining that uh, Muslim Brotherhood can't speak for themselves because they are in prison. But Dr. Amr al-Rag, for example, is a leader of the, their party. And he should come up with conditions to uh, re-engage and reconcile. I would like to know what the Muslim Brotherhood has as a condition to rejoin the reconciliation instead of just refusing what happened and denouncing the military. Uh good question. Thank you. That's a great question. Yeah. So, you know, I think it was JFK that said that you, you can't negotiate with those who say what is mine is mine and what is yours is negotiable. So you're now, you know, and not everybody is in jail, but a fair number of people are, including Katatni, the Shatir, Morsi, Osama Haddad. Katatni is not out, sir. Katatni is not out. He's, not out, sir. he's, he's the only you, one out. I'm telling you, sir, he's not out. No, he's not. He's out. <laughs> <He's not laughs> no, 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 so no. back to my He's point, back to my point that like everyone is entitled Ketatni. to their own opinions. Ketatni is in jail. Yeah. Yes, I mean, mm. I mean it's a it's a anyway. Okay. Um, so Dr. Darag proposed an initiative that was, in fact, um, Bill Burns, Bernardino Leone, uh, the Qatari foreign minister, and the uh, Emirati foreign, uh, foreign minister were party to. And it was predicated on a very simple, basic assumption that we need to sit down and negotiate a solution for Egypt as a whole. And that uh, I think the idea of you know, no victor, no vanquished really must be clearly understood by all. Uh, to do this, we need a series of confidence building measures, release some of the prisoners in exchange for releasing the prisoners. And, and the prisoners that were being asked to be released aren't just the Brotherhood, but Abu al Madi, Assam Sultan from al Wasaf party, you know, and others. And uh, in return, as, a, as an exchange of goodwill, uh, we will reduce the uh, demonstrators at Rabah and Nahda by 50%, uh, and we'll continue to sit down and, and talk. Uh, and I'm, now I'm reading this in the newspapers, probably just like you are, but there was a report mm -hmm. on this in the Post and in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people left feeling that you know, it's gonna happen any minute now, and then it didn't happen. Now, the, you know, what was reported in the papers is that eventually the military said, you can't trust those people, they're not going to fall through the deal. But, you know, I'll remind you that throughout the last year, when, uh, when President Morsi was, uh, was the president, that uh, people said to us on an ongoing basis, you are the government, you need to make overtures, you're the ones that need to make concessions, you're the ones that need to reach out. Now that the Brotherhood of the FGP are not the government, and they are not even the opposition because they're in jail, uh, they are the ones that have to reach out, they are the ones that have to make concessions, they are the ones that have to make overtures. It, 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 there's gotta be a consistent approach to things. We can't just flip flop. Yeah. You know, one of the things that strikes me, uh, uh, and I, I wrote this last year, one of the biggest surprises for me about the awakenings in general, but Egypt in particular, I, I said, you know, Egypt, Egypt is a country that needs to go on a weekend retreat. You know what I mean? Absolutely. No, no, that, I um, 
uh, that what really struck me about uh, about Egypt, but it really struck me all over. Well, like a month long. Uh, well, a month long retreat, but how, how little people knew each other, you know, really, really knew each other, you know. Certainly, the rise of, of Anur and, and, the, and the, the, the size of the Salafist movement in Egypt shocked people, you know. But that was just one. I think many that that these regimes really prevented people from really knowing each other in a deep sense. They survived. No, exactly. It was it was it was deliberate, of course. But anyways, I, I just think you know what what is so. That's why I'm, I'm I'm a bit of an optimist about Yemen and it, Yemen because it's so poor and so remote. But they're, they're actually doing this six month. They've been doing this this long national dialogue in a way that um, Egypt could so benefit from if there were a single catalyst, you know, a, a single figure who could, by a, a Mandela-like figure, you know, who could pull everyone together. And that's um, uh, that maybe that's a naive wish, but it does seem. Ella said, "Prisoners cannot negotiate." Yeah. So anyways, right, that, 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 that go ahead, briefly, I'm starting I mean, trouble Vic here. But Victor's, yeah. just, Victor's justice is, is an ugly thing. That's not what we want, particularly because the military is an equal opportunity oppressor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for them, this, is, this may be the Islamists today, it may be somebody else tomorrow, yeah. and indeed, it is likely to be somebody else tomorrow. In fact, you know, the, the Brotherhood or Islamists, unidentified Islamists that are supportive of, you know, the non-coup movement, if you will, they've been taking out their frustrations on cops, for instance, mm -hmm. cops who really have nothing to do with anything right. and, yeah. and, and are innocent. And frankly, the military, I think, is, is pretty satisfied to stand by and let it happen because then it justifies their crackdown. So I don't disagree with Mr. Haddad. Mm -hmm. I do believe that, you know, overtures have to be made and that, you know, uh, some compromises and some initiation from, from the government has to be made. And I would like to hear more from uh, not our military leaders, but from President Adli Mansour, from his prime minister, from mm -hmm. his government. Um, now we have a new ministry of right. reconciliation. Um, where are they in this process? Um, so, you know, the, we, we do need to get yeah. this moving. Mm -hmm. But once again, going back to the point of, you know, not being able to trust the Brotherhood, the Brotherhood over a year of their rule <laughs> systematically broke their promises. Um, but let's, <laughs> not, let's not start that again. Um, uh, right here. Please, yeah. The gentleman there. No, behind you. The, um, wait, because I don't want get, I want to get every row in. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bakhtar, I, I, uh, I'm from American University. Uh, earlier in the discussion, Ms. Ms. Gerges made a, a remark about the Noor's party affiliation or position on the oppression of Shiites. I think that's an important aspect of reconciliation, and I was wondering if you could reply to that. <laughs> okay. Just not crossfire. You don't, uh, have, to, you don't <laughs> have to applaud. Everybody's Look, question uh, and answer. We have the right at our country to express our point of view regarding our religion, uh, which if you, if, if you heard or, uh, or learned about the, uh, sh uh, the Shia, uh, Shiites uh, uh, ideology, which is uh, uh, keep uh, insulting our, our religion, our Islamic religion. So. What uh, we have mentioned at that time, before the, the 30th zone, just to rule everything in this country. Express your opinions, but on the same platform that uh, Salafi, uh, Copts, and others express the, their opinions. Don't uh, incite against uh, 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 Sunni uh, people. Don't, uh, um, don't, um, Anyway, uh, you, you have to, uh, to hear about uh, uh, Shia uh, point of view regarding our prophet and his companions, how they are talking about uh, uh, his wives, for example. So for a national security pur purpose, we advise Dr. Mohammed Morsi a lot to rule everything in this country based on specific uh, rules. Uh, we said a lot that uh, uh, in Egypt we need to fix the rules of the game, the political one, the, uh, the democratic one, even in, in, in every aspect, we should fix some uh, certain rules between, uh, between us all. How to express our opinions in front of Copts, for, uh, for example. How to, uh, how to deal even with other citizens that are not belonging to any uh, religion. The, the issue here for the Nur Party uh, is the way that all other Egyptians are dealing W with different ideologies or with different uh, 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 religion, 
in uh, based on certain rules, just to fix the rules yeah, of the game between all. Yeah, we, we got there. Good. Um, need you a quick, a quick yeah, intervention, and then we'll This is a poster that was being circulated and hung in Alexandria. Um, this is the Nord Party logo right down here, and here it is for you, Nadir. Naam did the Shia, together against Shia. Shia with an X next to it. Yasibuna Sahaba, they insult mm -hmm. the caliphs. Yuharifuna Quran, they deviate from the Quran. Yaktuluna Ahla Sunnah, they kill the, the family of Sunnis or, or Sunnis. How is that not incitement? I want to understand. It, you always come back with prove it. Can you prove that the Shiites have done these things? Can you prove that things? this is a formal uh, uh, incitement? So this is fabricated? I, I don't know. I don't know. This is this. So is this I a formal? Honey, we need, a, we need yeah, an intermediary. Honey, is, please. Is this a formal I campaign? I, 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 yeah. this, is, judgment, this, is, this is typically what we face in Egypt. Yes. Yeah. Psycho. <laughs> Seriously. There is. <laughs> There is, and this is the, 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 the mistakes we committed. We always, we always raise and focus on our differences. Yes. And some, unfortunately, some of the politicians say what they don't believe in, and the people cannot be fooled anymore. So as such, I think the best way to start to break this cycle of mistrust is to stick and push the military and the government to uh, to stick with and to move forward with the roadmap because this is very important. And then the reconciliation process itself will bring, uh, because for example, during the constitution, some of the Muslims brotherhood uh, 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 representatives of, you know, were invited to be uh, the fifth. They say they weren't, huh? they say they weren't. Sorry, no, Maggit Khulusi was one of the, uh, he made an announcement. He's, and he said, I have already represented before and I don't want to get involved again. So that's for the government. Uh, uh, Tariq Wafi, the ex-minister of uh, housing, Amr Darag. And Amr Darag clearly was not invited. I was in spoken no, explicitly the government, about to the that. Government, not to the committee. Okay. To the government. And they said, no, our position is clear. We can't do this. While people are in jail. Yeah. We well, this is <laughs> not. No, but in the context, is, is important, this Penny. Is, I understand, yeah, I mean. but what I'm saying is, we understand what you are coming from, but also there has been invitation. My point is, as we talk now, there, it's very difficult to break this cycle because they say, no, we want to be out of jail, and then we start negotiation. Fair enough. The others, the government say. No, some of the leaders were involved in uh, 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 killing or uh, encouraging people to kill, or at least this is the view. We can't put you out of the jail. You have to be uh, prosecuted. So this is the thing. And unless you have a proper transitional period and transitional justice, pro justice process, you can't go anywhere. So my yeah. advice always, let us move forward. Let us not to impose collective banning on anybody <laughs> and then you start to build yourself again build your trust and it will we will move forward and i think we will come to the point to all when we are going to sit on the negotiation table probably now is not the right moment mm -hmm. everybody stands and i think one of the way to diffuse this tension is to st to move forward with the roadmap uh, yeah, with that, all the risks associated with it. That's, I think, a, a, a wonderful uh, uh, theme and tone uh, to end on because we are uh, we are we are um, out of time. I shall let them more hopeful or less hopeful. <laughs> I don't want to test that proposition, actually. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we, we do have to end, but I, I, I would only add one thing to, uh, uh, to Hani's remark, and that is that um, uh, I think they should also, uh, everyone, in Egypt, everyone in Egypt, if I had one wish, should be made to watch the movie Invictus, uh, which is the story of Nelson Mandela's uh, yes. mm -hmm. takeover after uh, the end of apartheid. And there's one particular scene in that movie that I think has the most important message for Egyptians today. It's when the uh, new sports commissioner, the, um, the, new, the new black sports commissioner in Egypt, minister in, in Egypt, who represents, comes from the ANC, uh, the African National Congress, and comes to Mandela and they say, we wanna change the name of the national rugby team, the Springboks, 
to uh, an important to a to an authentic African name because Springboks is really associated with white apartheid rule. And what does Mandela say? He says, "No, we are not going to do that. We must surprise them." And when you see what I'm looking for in Egypt today, is when I read the news from Egypt, and I see whether it's from the Noor movement or the Stur or from cops or from Muslim brother, when I read a story that says, wow, from the military, that person surprised me. Surprised me with their courage of reconciling to the other side. Egypt really needs some surprises. Thank you very much. Okay.